Hi, we're um, just going up the hill uh, at the back of our house, Woodbridge Hill Cottage. Um, it's quite steep, uh, it's qu quite cold today, but um, we're trying to make our way up to a cabin, an old cabin that's at the very top of our hill. Um, and it should take as well, but we're um, making a track as much as possible. Uh, it's been overgrown. We haven't been right to the top for over a year or so. And uh, um, maybe we might be able to, we want to figure out how we can uh, fix up all the, uh, the cabin, there's a few rocks and things falling down. Uh, once you get past that, there is a lovely view over the Dontre Costa Channel. Okay, as you can see, we've, we've only come about 50 metres from the house, <laughs> but uh, it's quite an incline. You can see we're starting at a bit of altitude here already. This is the start of the, uh, the bushland, which runs up the back of our hill. And so this is where we've already done some work developing the path. Uh, so hopefully we'll get a bit more done today and we can give you all a view of the rock cabin. Okay, we've just reached the part of the path that we did a couple of weeks ago. Um, so we'll continue on up past here um, until we get to the area that needs continuation. There's a lot of cutting grass and knife grass up here and although it's great habitat little bandicoots and the other little animals that run around through it and nest in it if you have a slip and grab hold of it it will cut you to shreds you have to be very careful very sharp
these are some of the remnants from the old logs uh, when they logged them back in the, uh, the early part of the last century. Uh, there was a fire here many, many years ago, although uh, I'd say it was probably in the 1920s or 1930s. You can see one of the old stumps that was burnt. Uh, that would be felled. And some of the logs, have, there were some of the stumps, have, have still got the cut marks where they used to put the planks in and the loggers would uh, climb up those with their saws and fell the trees. Continue on. What's the markers? Oh yes, and we've put markers up here just so that we don't get lost because the bush goes on for uh, quite a few kilometres over the top of this hill into uh, Crown land and state forest. Here's another one of those stumps I spoke about. I'm not sure whether there's any cutouts on this one but you can see it was burnt quite a long time ago. Okay, it's getting a little flatter. Catch my breath. Yeah, the, the wallabies go through the bush here and uh, they actually know the best way to go. So we follow their tracks. Occasionally we see snakes in the summer, so autumn is a good time once the weather starts to cool. Winter time is just too slippery up here to work. And there are many rocks. I remember a few years ago, Anne and I were coming through here and I slipped on a, a mossy rock went flat on my back and I only uh, just uh, stopped myself from hitting my head on a rock which uh, could have been uh, bad news here's one of those big logs very big if you can imagine difference in the width between say that tree that's been here about 30 years and that's very tall and the old growth forest where they came through early in the last century there before the previous owner has made a big cut out with the chainsaw that Anne's stepping through here now makes it a bit easier well here's one of the Cutouts, thank God. So we're on the right track. Uh, that's probably there many years with a big old tree in the past. Gosh, it goes a long way. Almost all rock here now with a bit of clay underneath. What was that then? No, we're on the right track. I can see the ribbon right above your head there. And there it is.
I may need to change that battery, I think. Really? <laughs> And I thought I'd charge both. Okay. The tour guide is very good, but she's very hard to keep up with. Hi, we're getting to nearly the top of the, of, of the hill. We should be able to see the cabin very soon. There's a bit of light coming in here, so we'll just keep on our merry way. When we came here 20 years ago, there were a lot more, well, at least five, I would say, very, very large dead trees that were not taken out. And they were still standing, um, but over the years during the windstorms, it's been reduced down to, I think, two now. Okay, Anne's just spotted a currawong up here. Let's see if we can get a picture. The birds love it up here. Yep. Where's the currawong? Oh yeah, I see. I don't know whether you can spot him through the trees there. He's sitting on a branch. No, he's still there. Hello, currawong. Okay, we've just reached uh, the little obelisque that was here. I think they pronounce it that way. It was put up by the previous owner. He actually, uh, he was Norwegian, and hence the, the look of the cottage. Uh, if you travel to Norway, um, many of the houses look like ours, with the orange and the green roof. Not to everyone's taste, but we like it. It's, we find it's cute. The locals actually call it the uh, gingerbread cottage. So in the obelisk, I don't know whether there's anyone buried under there or a dog, but it's, uh, you can see there's been a lot of branches have fallen down around it, and it's still standing. So the fellow was in his 80s when he, when he sold the cottage to us. He's since passed away, but he used to travel up here and he used to collect a lot of the flat stones in his backpack and a lot of the paving you see around the front of the cottage was done from uh, the stones he used to bring down so God only knows how many trips he did up the hill collecting these um, so the rock and the vegetation changes quite dramatically up here although it may not appear so on the camera okay here's one of the big trees that uh, were standing when we first arrived here and it's fallen down and it just missed the rock cabin or the rock hut which is the top of that rock face up there um, and the, the log is since it's hit the ground and it's laying on the earth it's starting to rot away fairly quickly so it's you can't really use it for firewood now and there's another huge one over there as well that has fallen down probably took out this smaller one at the same time. Ray, the, the name of the old fellow that was here, he actually did an amazing job up here. I'm sure it was a labour of love. Also the way he decked out the inside of the and the outside of the cottage. Um, he was very quite quite clever. As you can see we're we're into the, the large boulder type rock here now and over the years of course with erosion and the ice the rock peels away from the main body it's getting quite steep here watch my feet watch my step okay i'll turn it off for a while okay we've reached the first part of the views here out above some of the trees Here's one of the big trees still standing, and that's probably only about a fifth of the uh, original height of the tree before it died, and parts of it I showed you earlier 
they've snapped off the top. Out in that direction there, which is a easterly, southeasterly direction, are the Hearts Mountains, and on a good day you can see the snow-capped Hearts Mountains in the distance over Signet. And if we pan around towards the south here, we head towards South Bruny Island. So when we get up further on top of the hut, I'll climb up on the roof and you can see it. Okay, Ray built all of this many, many years ago, and well, I tell you what, it's it's uh, stood the test of time. There's been a lot of stir, um, although the door's blown off, I can see, since we were here last. It's happened a couple of times, and we do have animals staying inside to take shelter, and there's a bit of rock down, so um, probably there might have been some wild dogs that have climbed in over the wall, and inside doing that they've taken out a bit of the rock wall so I'll get you a closer look I think Ray was in his 60s or maybe 65 when they retired out to Woodbridge him and his wife and I think himself and the grandkids and the kids built this log a rock cabin a rock hut we built the seats where Anne's sitting there at the moment um, oh, it's a bit of a mess here so yeah. a lot of work to be done to uh, bring it back and you can see uh, some of the uh, manure from the dogs that have been oh, yeah. taking shelter yeah, up here, here. So there's yeah. definitely been dog up here yeah. whether they're domestic or wild um, all that has to be but uh, I'd say they clamour through here quite a bit but he did some great work here I don't think he was a stonemason but my god he did a good job he actually built a little fireplace here although it, uh, I put the metal across there to try and keep the smoke from coming out the front which helps a little bit and we've built up the sides yeah. um, what a shame I didn't bring any matches <laughs> As you can see, the workmanship that Ray carried out is, is quite good. He's, he's got all of he's cut all of these uh, timbers from around here, like I mentioned earlier in another video. He's harvested these tall, straight timbers, and he's made seats or bench seats right around the edge of the rock hut. He must have had a hand. Oh, look at that big, look at that big stone. Yeah, well, I think he's he's used what stone was here as well. Yeah. He's built around it, but. Um, yeah, some of these rocks, massive. if they came out, um, we might have to point them sometimes <laughs> just to keep them in place, stop them from falling down. So all of this has been uh, damaged. Now, I don't know, it could have been wind, it could have been branches falling on the outside, but to be honest, I think it was uh, animals. Anyone that wants to know, uh, the rock hut here is at roughly between 450 and 475 metres above sea level, sea level. And as you can see, the, um, the trees are growing probably about 6 to 10 feet each year, gum trees. And these are only considered saplings down here, so they're going to get huge.
Open up, Bobby. I'm trying to get that out of the branch up there. It's not actually this it is. Whoa. Okay, I think we've got enough timber now for uh, the fire for next time we come up here. Uh, it's going to get cold over the next couple of months, so we could do with the fire when we're working up here to take uh, refuge if it rains. In fact, we're about to get a shower here now, so we're going to head down the hill. Unfortunately, we didn't get as much done as we'd hoped to, but uh, at least we can see what has to be done over the next few months. Just setting up the fire for the next time we come up, we'll remember to bring matches and maybe a sausage or two.